students, uh, we are looking for our lesson, tissue. Uh, after safety tissue comes, so we are talking about tissue. So there are mainly uh, three types of plant tissues we have seen that are protective tissue, very systematic tissue, and permanent tissue. So we had already had a discussion about uh, uh, protective tissue that is the epidermis and cuticle, and we have talked about very systematic tissue also. So now we are going to talk about permanent tissue. But we will take just the insist of very systematic tissue by explaining permanent tissue. So, at today's topic is permanent tissue. See here, the same is only something different. Permanent tissue. What does it mean, permanent tissue? What is it by permanent? So, here, we will take insist of very systematic. We have seen peristematic tissue. Peristematic tissues are responsible for the growth and division of cell. Cell division you know, is one cell divided to form two cells, two cells, four. In this manner, cell division is taking place. You can go in my cell lesson and see we have seen about cell division. So, peristematic tissues are responsible for the growth of the plant and for the responsible for the uh, division of the cell. Okay. So what happens whenever this uh, and where does meristematic tissues are present? Meristematic tissues are responsible for the at the tip of the uh, shoot and at the root. So these are responsible for the meristematic tissues are responsible for the increase of height of the plant as well as breadth of the plant because this, uh, there are three types of meristematic tissues we have seen. So these meristematic tissues are responsible for the increasing height of the plant as well as width of the plant where there is a present. So what happens how the, this meristematic tissues are connected to the permanent tissue? We will see. See there are uh, certain meristematic tissues. I will show you about this. These are meristematic tissues. Now what will happen? These meristematic tissues will grow first they are growing and they are performing a specific function. Whenever they are growing and performing a specific function according to their shape and size, that process is called as a differentiation process. Okay, it means differentiation it is the process of dividing cell. Cells are dividing and forming a certain shape and size, and according to that, it is performing a specific function. That is called as a cell differentiation. So here, what happens? These are some very systematic tissues. And these meristematic tissues are growing and dividing. This is the common function of the meristematic tissue. But what happens after some time, after a certain period of time, these meristematic tissues are unable to divide. These meristematic tissues are not dividing. These are remaining as it is. Okay, these are meristematic tissues. These are still meristematic tissues. These are not dividing now. What do they have exactly done? They have used the capacity to divide now. These are also meristematic tissues, but these meristematic tissues have now used the capacity to divide further. And so that they turn as a permanent tissue because they have to perform specific function. See, we will see about meristematic uh, tissue. Meristematic tissue only have to grow, means they have to grow and have to divide. That is the function for the meristematic tissue. But the pulmonary tissue has to perform a specific function, a specific role into the plant it has to perform, such as storage, we can say, conduction of water, and food, we can say, protection, as well as the other are taking part in the photosynthesis too. So it has to perform a specific function. So it is acquiring a specific shape, size, and according to that, it is. Uh, working and so that it have uh, these uh, tissues, meristematic tissues, they lose the ability. So simply, I, I would like to say you that when meristematic tissues lose the ability to divide, they turn into permanent tissue. Is it clear for you all? Okay. Whenever the meristematic tissues are there, whenever they lose the ability to divide further, turn into permanent tissue. And so that. 
structure of the permanent tissue uh, may be uh, so first is not permanent tissue this permanent tissue lose ability to divide these are permanent tissue which lose the ability to divide they form shape specific shape and size as they have to perform the specific function they have to perform they have to perform specific function and so that they are acquiring a specific shape okay permanent tissue lose ability to divide they have specific shape and size according to that they have to perform a specific function and that specific function whenever they are performing by any specific shape and size that is called as a cell differentiation differentiated this cell explant the tissues are differentiated to form a specific function so they are taking part permanent tissues are taking part into the tissue differentiation or cell differentiation okay so now we will see the structure how they are designed now we will see the structure of it. how these are Very stimulating. 
Remember they have a popping a specific function that is called as a cell differentiation. Cell differentiation term is designed for them. Tissue differentiation or cell differentiation term is designed for them. So this is related to their characteristics, all our characteristics of the permanent tissue. How is the structure of this permanent tissue? Permanent tissue is round, elongated or polygonal. I have heard now polygonal is shape and intercellular spaces. Intercellular spaces means the gap between two cells are present into the permanent tissue. And the uh, third one is they contain large central vacuoles because they have to perform function. In exactly what kind of function they are performing? They are performing the function of storage, the conduction of water and food, photosynthesis and protection. Okay, so this is related to the permanent tissue. Now
weight gamma and uh, scalar weight gamma. So now uh, we will discuss every simple permanent tissue in detail. So simple permanent tissue. Simple permanent tissue has three types. So we will first talk about only first important simple permanent tissue that is pari. Parenchyma. Pronounce it well. Don't pronounce anything else. Okay. Parenchyma. Simple permanent tissue. Type of simple permanent tissue. Already I have talked about the characteristics of the permanent tissue. So we will see here first where this. Simple permanent tissue parenchyma occurs. So occurrence. Where does it occur? See here, students. Parenchyma occurs whole in whole plant everywhere into the from root. It occurs into the root. It occurs into the stem, including branches. It occurs into the leaf, fruit, and flowers too. These are occurring everywhere in the plant. Whole plant, the sparing cactus tissues are present, including your root, stem, leaf, fruit, and flowers. So, occurrence of the parenchyma uh, cactus tissue is root, stem, leaf, fruit, and leaves. Okay. Then, how is the structure for the parenchyma tissues? Structure, as I have already told you. The common properties of the permanent tissues, they may be round, they may be elongated. Round means like this, huh? elongated means like this. Okay, and polygonal means any means a face. Okay. Polygonal means. So, structure for the parenchymatous tissue is round, elongated, and polygonal. This same wall may be thin or may be thick also. The function, whatever the function it has to perform, based on it, this, this same wall is different. Same wall is he also and he also. The same one may be he or same one may be he. This is these are the structures for the parenchymatous tissue. Okay, same one may be he also or he also. Third is intercellular. Spaces are present. Intercellular spaces are present into the parenchymatous tissues. Intercellular spaces means what do you mean? See, if uh, this is cell, these are cells, you know, it's not a cell. So, gap between the two cells is called as an intercellular space. So, intercellular spaces are present. The parenchymatous tissue, intercellular spaces are present. So, how it is present when large intercellular spaces are present or small intercellular spaces are present? We will see later because here facts are going to come in that it will be more clearer for you. So, now we will go to the function of the parenchymatous tissues. So, we will see the parenchymatous tissues, the type of a simple permanent tissue, occurrence, root, stain, leaf, fruit. Plant. Everywhere, every part of the plant, this all, uh, every part of the plant, the parenchymatous tissue will present. Structure, structure is round, elongated, or maybe polygonal too. And same one is thick, can be thick also, can be thin also. And intercellular spaces are present. Okay. So now we will go for the function of the parenchymatous tissue. The major function for the parenchymatous tissue for the parenchyma is it has to store food, storage. Storage of food is the major function for the parenchyma. 
cuarta línea. Sobre yo get students, I have to go here, when you put it, simple component is to that is parenthema. What is the function parenthema? What is the structure of the parenthema? Yes, these are living cells. Their walls, their cell walls may be thin, may be thick. Their shape is round, elongated and polygonal. And the function has to perform by the parenthema distribution storage of food. This is the major component for the parenthema. And chlorine chyma means chlorophyll pigments are present in plant tissues which are responsible for the photosynthesis process, which is the mode of the autotrophic mode of nutrition. So plants can prepare their own food. And these are living cells also. And chlorine chyma it provides buoyancy for the plant, means floating. Plants can be float into the water because of the chlorine chyma or tissue. And example is water lily. Now that. Now we will talk about uh, next permanent tissue that is cholangiana. Cholangiana is the another simple permanent tissue. This is also important type of a simple permanent tissue. Where does it found mainly? Where does it occur mainly? The appearance of this colon gyma into the plant into leaf stalk. Leaf stalk. Do you know what is meant by leaf stalk? See, suppose this is leaf. This is leaf. Then this part of the leaf is called as a leaf stalk. It should be more clear of the colon. Appearance of this colon gyma is tissue is into the leaf. This is leaf, and the end of the leaf is called as a leaf stalk. Mainly, this pollen uh, cap is found in the leaf stalk as well as into the leaf stalk and into the stem, stem of diapod plant. Diapod means diapod plant means. Which contains two cotyledons. Two cotyledons. Two cotyledons. Two parts. If the seed contains two parts, then it is called as a diapod plant. Okay? Example can you give? Yes, peas. Peas is the example. Beans is the example. Ground is the example. Okay? So this is called as a diapod plant which contains two cotyledons, two parts for the seed. The example is peas, beans, ground and also can be the example. And there is a type of monopot also, maize, rice. Okay, wheat are the example of monopot. This we will study in our next topic. So, occurrence is what? Uh, leaf stalk and the stem of the diaper plant. How is the structure of it? How the structure is designed? See, colon and tissue are always living cells. Living. Living cells. These are elongated to elongated. Elongated means the shape is like uh, shape is not round exactly. Elongated. Okay. Third is inter cellular spaces are less. Uh, 
here in this part it will be more thick it will be less thick here here it can be less thick here it can be more thick so irregularly thickened cell walls irregularly thickened cell walls into the uh, into the tissue irregularly thickening of the cells into the corners of the tissue irregularly thickened irregularly
परमानेंट
mechanical support for the plant. Why it is providing mechanical support? Because of presence of lignified wall. Lignified wall is because of the lignin which is cementy. Cemented. Once the thing is cemented means it is very hard. So lignin is present and so that the wall is cementing and so that what happens? It is providing a mechanical support for the plant. These are dead cells. Scalarine thymus is tissue or scalarine thymus is dead cell. So it provides a mechanical support or mechanical strength also to the plant. Okay? And keep the plant very very stiff. And it protects. It protects inner living tissues. For example, husk of the coconut which is protecting. If you will uh, see, the coconut trees are too hydrated, means too long these are. But whenever the coconut is falling from the top, it never breaks. Why it is not break? Because husk of the coconut is made from the scalarine thymatous tissue or made from the scalarine thyma which provide the mechanical support for the plant or for the fruit even. Understood students? So scalarine thymatous tissues are dead and which provide the mechanical support for the plant. Thank you. We have concluded our simple permanent tissue with parenchyma, choline thyma and scalarine thyma. Thank you very much.